I think the last couple of years I have seen a tremendous enriching of the debate. Not only do many more people know about it, but it's much more credible. You know, I mean, words like sustainability and green maybe in the past have suffered from this kind of ideological tinge and maybe associated with certain sectors of society. Whereas now, not only, let's say, for the environmental and if you like the moral reasons about uh, having to tackle our resource use and our emissions, but also recognizing that business is transforming and that all these new opportunities from new technology, new ways of doing things. So I think there's a tremendous mainstreaming has gone on and it's added a lot of credibility to the concept. So uh, again, it's no longer just for the enlightened few, if you like, it's now a normal part. If I'm a multinational, I'm thinking about my carbon footprint. I'm thinking about how my products sit in a low carbon world or in a, in a climate change world. If I'm in services, I'm thinking about what are the opportunities for me in those sectors. So much more mainstream, much greater levels of awareness than before. Well, I think there is a recognition for us that there's plenty to be won, you know, as well as this becoming a real global transition that now I think everyone accepts is really happening. It's also, to a certain degree, as well as the language of threat and challenge, we also realize that change brings opportunity. Whenever there's change, there's, there's opportunities for new technologies, new ways of doing business. And, and Ireland obviously needs to think about those here and now. And the fact that we're in such a fluid state gives us an advantage because we often talk about Ireland's advantage, let's say, with its, with its renewable energy resource, which is, of course, massive. But Clean tech and sustainability at heart is a process of change. So people have to change the way they consume, the way the way they move around cities. Governments have to change the way they regulate. Business has to change their, their product portfolio and their services. So all that change requires adaptability and fluidity. And again, that's Ireland's real advantage here is if we can just get that spirit of, of fluidity where government policy and regulation and fiscal policy can keep at least somewhat a pace with the technological developments. But of course, that's a real challenge because we've massive amounts of innovation going on here. I meet people every day with brilliant ideas and new technologies emerging. So it's always a challenge to create an environment where such people can flourish, that that regulation is, is fit for purpose, that supports are fit for purpose. So I really think the winners in this race will be around those who, as a nation of government and private actors in society generally, can, can build that spirit of fluidity and work together. I think a real challenge here is that something like climate change or sustainability doesn't tend to stand alone as a, as a departmental issue or as one policy issue. So the real key to success here is to integrate uh, the changes that go with, with this movement into policy across the board. So, you know, climate change is affecting agriculture right now, it's affecting transport, sustainable energy is affecting buildings, it's affecting education, it's affecting health. So how does one get some of the principles of, of readiness to transform, readiness to innovate into all parts of government? And again, I think that's an, ad an advantage for Ireland at the moment because we are thinking about things like public sector reform, about looking for where our future jobs and wealth will, will come from. So everything is a little bit a little bit liquid at the moment, and it gives us an opportunity, I think, to be a bit more innovative than, than you traditionally could be. So it's about the role of the enterprise agencies, agencies like ourselves in the Sustainable Energy Authority. It's about the role of mainstream government departments, the role of third level institutions. Everyone has a role to play, which is a, both the challenge of an issue like this, but also the opportunity. This isn't a silver bu bullet type of issue where one law passed or one one, you know, one mission uh, undertaken is going to solve this. It's more just about recognition that you have to be ready to innovate, you have to be ready to, to foster new ways of thinking. And so it's more that kind of spirit or even philosophy, I use that word, rather than just one policy instrument or something. And again, that makes it very hard, but it means that, that every other country is grappling with much the same issues. And if we can get some of that, then there's a tremendous opportunity. Thank you.